My name is William Justice. Today I'm going to show you how to create a customizable card flip transition using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion, and how to use my flip transition generator to create your own animations. There can be a lot of steps to setting up the animation. The generator helps speed up the process. So I was watching TV the other day and I saw this video of some fans in a stadium flipping cards to create different images and signs. It looked interesting and I thought it might be something that I could set up using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. Okay, to be honest, what I came up with, I'm not sure if it's the smartest or most elegant way to set up this type of animation, but it definitely does work and does get the job done. It is kind of a brute force method, but it does seem pretty flexible and there are quite a few different options that you can use. There's probably a better way to set this up with some nodes in Fusion, or I think a script or plugin would work, but honestly, I really don't feel like learning how to do that right now. There's not a lot of documentation, and I just wanted to get something done. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe and like this video. I really appreciate everyone's support. If you have any comments or questions, or a better way or idea for how to set up this type of animation, um, let me know, comment below. I'd really love to hear from you. So to start, I wanted to create one rectangle section and be able to flip it and rotate it. Once I had that, I could use that and replicate it and put it in different parts of the screen to flip those areas of the screen. To get started, let's create a fusion animation. We'll go to the effects library up here and click on effects and just take a fusion composition and drag it into our timeline. And we can size that out. Click on effects, find the fusion composition and drag that into the timeline. We'll lengthen it just a touch and click fusion to get into fusion. Okay, so we're here in Fusion, and to set this animation up, we're gonna use a couple of photos for now, but they could really be video clips or anything that you want. Um, I'm gonna drag both of those into the timeline, and we'll take a look what we have. So these are the two photos that we're gonna transition between. And let's get rid of the media pool. The first step here is to create a rectangle area that we're gonna flip, and we're gonna use a rectangle mask to do that. So that's this tool right here. We're gonna take that and drag it into the node area. And we're gonna connect the rectangle to the mask input of both media one and media two. And we have a rectangle that we can adjust. And I'll show you how to adjust the size for this in a little bit based on the dimensions of the image. The next thing we wanna do is use a DVE node. And that's gonna allow us to flip the image in a kind of a 3D space. So with media one selected, hit control space and search for DVE. And add that in and let's uh, select the DVE node right there and show you how you can just rotate the X Y and Z to flip the image around we'll reset it and we'll put uh, this one back in the viewer we're gonna want to rotate both of these images at the same time so what we can do is we can create an instance of the DVE node so that we so it can be controlled in one place with DVE one selected hit control C to copy it and then click off of that and hit control shift V and we have an instance of the DVE node. We're gonna connect a media N2 into that input right there. So let's put DVE1 in viewer one and DVE2 in viewer two by selecting it and hit one, selecting that and hit one, select DVE instance one and hit two. Now, when we go over to the inspector and rotate any of the axes here, you can see that it's rotating them, it's rotating both of them. Okay, now that we can rotate this around, let's connect it out all the way to the media out. So we're gonna take the output of DVE1 into the output of DV instance one and merge those together put that, and put it to the media out. So we're gonna hit uh, two on merge one to see what we have. I'm gonna to go to a single viewer here. So we can flip this around. Now you notice that we only see the media in one, the first one, the first image. And that's because it's being merged on top of the second image. So to fix this, we're gonna use some keyframing. We'll go to the very first frame. Let's set up our rotation. So we'll go to the first frame and we're gonna keyframe the Y rotation. And we'll go to about frame 30. And we're gonna set it to 180. And that means it's gonna flip halfway around. So what we're gonna do is halfway through this animation, we're gonna adjust the blend on this merge so that we can see it. So we'll go halfway through the animation, go one frame back and click on the merge node. We're gonna keyframe the blend property, go forward one frame, and we're gonna take that blend all the way down. And what we have is the first part of the animation is the first image and when it gets halfway through, it's gonna flip to the second image. and we have a nice flip. Now let's go back to two viewers. There's a couple problems we have here. The first one, I'm gonna put um, the media in two into this viewer. You'll notice something. Let's zoom in a little bit. It's actually mirrored, it's flipped. 
So when we, when we flip this 180 degrees, we're actually looking at it reversed, a mirrored image. So we're gonna have to add something to flip it back. So let's put that back. And with media into select, we're gonna use another DVE node. And all we need to do is on this DVE node, we're gonna set the Y rotation to 180. So that means at the first DVE, we're gonna invert it. And the second DVE is gonna flip it back. So this is our animation now. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, the second problem we're dealing with, we'll go back to one viewer by clicking this icon up here. We'll scale, zoom out just a little bit. Okay, the second problem is when we're flipping this, it's always gonna be flipping around the center of the screen unless we do something to change it. So let's move this rectangle over here so we wanted it to be on this part of the screen. When we do the animation, you'll see that it's actually rotating around the center of the screen right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the rectangle and we're gonna right click on the center and we're gonna publish that. So that means we're gonna be able to use that center position, which is right here in our flip. So we'll, go, we'll hit the DVE, the DVE one, we'll right click on pivot and we're gonna say connect to rectangle one center. Okay, so that's done a little bit for us. You can see now that this is rotating around this pivot position right here, that's right, right in the middle of the rectangle. But we have this other image out here on the side. We need to adjust the pivot position on this DVE2 that reversed the image. So all we gotta do is click on DVE2, right click on pivot, say connect to rectangle one center. That sets DVE2 to rotate around this position as well. So with this setup, we can take our rectangle and move it anywhere we want on the screen. And it's going to flip that area of the screen. So to make this transition, we're going to take, we're going to need to have multiple of these rectangles or pieces and put them all over the screen. So I'm going to set this up so that it makes it really easy to copy it. I'm going to put it in a group and we're going to copy these groups around and position them on the screen to set up the animation. To set up the animation, we're going to need to copy what we just did. To do that, we're going to adjust the node structure so that it's easier to copy and set up the animation. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make the node area a little bit bigger. We're going to take the rectangle and we're going to disconnect it from these the media in one and media in two. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to want to use these several times. With media in one selected, hit the transform icon to add a transform node. With media in two selected, hit the transform icon and have a transform node. These transform nodes are really just placeholders. They're gonna be a easy way for you to connect up your inputs into this animation. We don't want to use the masking on the media in one and media in two. The reason for that is that you don't wanna to have to keep adding this mask on every time you set up the animation. So we're gonna use a matte control node and it'll pretty much do the same thing. So with transform one selected, hit the matte control icon. That's this one right here. And we'll move these nodes over just a touch. With transform two selected, we'll go ahead and hit the matte control icon. So we're gonna take the rectangle and put it into the garbage mat on matte control one, as well as matte control two. And you'll see that it took that space out right there where we're masking that out. Let's select the rectangle, go into the inspector and hit invert. And we effectively have the same thing. So we can take this and move it around. So this right here, these nodes represent one piece. Okay, so let's say we're gonna set up a four by four grid. We know that the full width is one, so we're gonna go 0.25 for the width, and the height, we're gonna go 0.25. So this square is a quarter of the, the width and a quarter of the height. So we're gonna need four going across and four going down. Let's, uh, let's just replicate one to show you how it works. We'll place this in the middle, for now we're close to the middle. We're gonna copy the mat control, the rectangle, the DVEs, and the merge. We're going to right click on that and we're going to say group. And this is our first piece. To move it around, we can, op we can double click on it to open it up, select the rectangle and move it. So let's create another piece. We're going to hold, we're going to select group one, hit control C, click off of it and hit control V. And this is going to be our second piece. And we just need to connect up the inputs from these transforms to the inputs on the group open up that group two and we'll take our second piece and move it right there. Now you're not seeing it yet because we need to merge it in. 
So let's merge these together. We'll disconnect the media out and connect the output of group one to the output of group two. And that's gonna create a merge node. Let's take a look at what that merge node looks like. And there's our second piece. And they're both flipping. So to, to do this, you would need to take these groups, copy it, we'll do one more, paste it, take the output of this merge to the output of that group, the transform one, which is gonna be the media N1, connect that to the group and connect the transform two. And we'll go in, open up that group and we'll move this rectangle around. And view the merge three. So now we have our three, three pieces. So one of, one of the thing I wanted to show you, let's go back to this first piece here. We'll open up this group. So with the DVE, DVE selected, let's adjust the pivot position here. So let's uncheck the keyframe. And you see right here, there's a little green X right in the middle. And that's the pivot position for this DVE node. Let's take that and move it down. Okay, so right here. So now what's interesting is that when we adjust the rotation, it's going to rotate around this point and not the center of the image. And we can use this to create some interesting effects. I realized this was gonna get messy really fast. So I decided to create a generator for it that would generate the fusion animation and allow us to set up some different options for um, flip directions, timing, and also the size, of the, the size of the grid. You want it three by three, five by five, that sort of thing. So let me show you how it works. Okay, here we are at my uh, website. This is buildjustice.com. Um, I'm starting to post a few of my things here, um, some of my tutorials and uh, the different assets that I create. Um, this is where you're gonna find the card flip generator. It's right here. And to access it, all you need to do is click the image or click launch generator. Okay, this is the basic screen. It's really simple. Um, I'm just gonna go over the options super quick. Um, you can set the sequence of images to flip randomly or they can go left to right or top to bottom. You can set the rows and columns. The time is the number of frames that it's gonna take for each image to flip around. There's a delay, so in between each flip, it's gonna to wait to do the next one, and that's the delay. There's the scale, so when it flips the images, it can either scale them down or scale them up to create an interesting effect. And the last thing is there's uh, two options for the X pivot and Y pivot. And those are the ones that if you change them, the image will fly around a little further off the screen. And there's some inf information down here um, about each of those settings. So let's go ahead and we're gonna create an animation that's uh, say four by four, flip time 15 seconds. We'll have a delay of two seconds and just we'll leave all the other things at the default. And we're just gonna hit generate download fusion animation. And you can see down here, it generated a download file for us. So all we're gonna need to do is take that file and drop it into Fusion. Let me show you how that works. I have DaVinci Resolve opened up, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the transition we just generated on a couple of clips. And I'm gonna set, I'm gonna show you how to set it up so we, you can reuse it as a Fusion transition on any of your clips really easily. So let's start by dragging a couple clips into the timeline here. We're gonna click on Effects Library, make sure you have Video Transition selected, and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see these three fusion transitions. Now these can be customized. So we can put it on there and open up the actual animation in fusion and set it up however we want. And I'm gonna, we're gonna use that to do the card flip transition. So let's take the cross dissolve and put it right between there. Now you wanna stretch this out to make sure that there's enough time. And if, if the animation cuts off too quickly, you're gonna to wanna to adjust the length of this transition. So to customize the cross dissolve transition, right click on it and hit open in fusion page. And this is where we have the cross dissolve and this is the media in and media out. So let's put the media one, this is the one on top and that's gonna be the one that transitions to. All we need to do now is take the fusion settings file we just generated and drop it right into the fusion page and connect up the inputs and we're ready to go. Let me show you how that works. So this is the file on my computer, it's this uh, settings file. All we need to do is take it and just drag it into fusion. And there we go, this is the animation. I'll kind of give you a real quick overview. Okay, so each one of these is the pieces, and then the pieces, this is how they're merged together, and this is our media out right over here. So let's set it up. Um, we, we're not gonna need this, this media out that came with the fusion transition, so we'll get rid of that. We do not need the cross dissolve, so get rid of that. To get this going, all we need to do is connect up the media one to the media top node, and the media two to the media bottom node. Um, go over here to the, our media out, and hit two so that we can see it and the transition is ready to go. See, see right there, it's starting to flip. Um, 
We can take the group and just to show you how it works, we can start spinning nodes around just like before. Except these are all, they're all set up with the correct size and position in the right place. So let's go back to the timeline and see what happened. Uh, there's our transition. You can, I think it cuts, cuts out a little bit early. So what you could do is you could take it and lengthen it a bit to make sure that there's enough time for all of the tiles to flip. Depending on how long your animation is and how much, uh, how many tiles and what the timing is, you're going to need to adjust that transition period. Uh, but it's really easy to do. So if you want to reuse this, all you need to do is right click on the transition, right click on the transition and say create transition preset and give it a name. We'll call it uh, card flip and hit OK. And all of a sudden you see right here we have a card flip transition. If we ever want to use that again, all we need to do is take it and drag it to where we want and it's going to work. And you have a customized card flip transition. You can create different ones of you know, three by three, five by five, um, whatever you like, adjust the timing and you got a customized transition. That's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can find a use for the transition generator. If you want to try it, just go to buildjustice.com and click on the transition generator. From there, you can enter the options and push the generate and drag that right into DaVinci Resolve and you have your animation ready to go. If you do use it, I'd appreciate a mention. Also, let me know how it goes and what kind of interesting projects you use it for. Subscribe to see more videos about filmmaking and DaVinci Resolve. I have a lot of ideas and many, many new videos on the way. Comment below and let me know what you think. And definitely let me know if you have a better way to set up this type of transition. I'd really be interested to see what you came up with. Thanks for watching.